My name is Rhapsody and welcome to Roguebook. Roguebook is a roguelike deck building game with RPG elements from Abracam Entertainment, the developer Safaria, and co-designed by Richard Garfield, the creator of Magic the Gathering. I've done some stuff with Roguebook in the past, which is why when I saw this offer come across my table, I knew that I had to accept. And this offer, I hear you ask? Oh yes. This series is sponsored by Nacon Gaming, the publishers of the game. You can pre-order the game on PC on Steam at the link at the very top of the description down below, and the game will also be available on PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch at launch on June the 24th. For the moment, that's it. Next run, new run rather, and dive in. If you do pre-order the game, by the way, you will have access to the Hero Skins Pack DLC at launch, which includes four different outfits for the heroes for free. This will launch us probably into the tutorial because this is the first time that I've launched the game since the Demathon. So this will be serving as a little bit of a reintroduction for myself, but an introduction for those of you who aren't necessarily as familiar with the game. Good morning, stranger. Where am I? My head hurts. You've been sleeping for quite some time. My name is Nadim. I'm trapped in here with you. Let's not waste another minute. Take this. It's dangerous to go alone. This is my brush. You may borrow it. I'll show you how to use it. Ah, you're demanding I use it instantaneously. Use your brush to reveal paper tiles around in a radius of two. So contrasting to a lot of other roguelike deck builder games that uh, have emerged from the genre recently or that I've explored recently, this has a larger emphasis on the world map or the world map, the level map, the, the larger map itself. It's less of an FTL node type system and more of a discovery of a kind of fog of war. Like it's, it's closer to a map from a strategy game and RPG, naturally, uh, than to the kind of convention that has been set in roguelike deck builders recently. Oh, not gonna give me immediate extra instruction? Okay, we've discovered Sirocco down here. Yo, Shara, where are we? Uh, we need to get out of here. I don't like the smell of this place. To explore more of this cursed book, you must harvest the very ink it has used to form its creations. A tricky task. <laughs> I like that he doesn't even say, go on, go over there. No, it, it's, it's very much a nod in the direction of there is a fight up here. And the rewards you saw there, one guaranteed ink. Ink is what we're going to need to use, as the game is currently explaining, uh, to continue to explore and develop the map. Look out, they're attacking. So we can see the intent system, but no problem. If we both go defensive, it won't even scratch us. We can see the enemy's intent directly above their head. Again, a pretty familiar system for those of us who have played a lot of deck builders relatively recently, or rather as the resurgence of the genre. Um, enemies can be doing 15 damage. I really, really, really love the animations for these characters as well, by the way. They, oh. So it, it's got that kind of like 2.5D situation going on that a lot of these games do, right? Monster Train, Slay the Spire. Like I've, I've seen it's, it's the kind of like uh, a bunch of different elements kind of uh pinned together at joints and just rotating a little bit maybe warping a little like we can see the shield is doing here this might be the implementation of it that i've seen that i like the most so far uh it looks very very naturalistic it 2.5d whilst looking 3d okay so we have these cards in hand, gain block, gain block, gain block, and then we've got two different strikes. I cannot block for 15 without using all three of my block cards, so I will do them. However, we can see here, guard. It has the mana cost of the card. You know, we've got the mana down here in the bottom left symbol. It's, 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 uh, it, it's definitely presentationally familiar for those of you who have played Again, the resurgence of the roguelike deck building genre. But the little symbol around it means that the unit in back is attempting to use this and on guarding, will rotate their slot to the front. The end turn. Now it's our turn to fight back. 
You can see the enemy is intending to block here. Uh, lunge is a charge attack. It will swap the hero to the front. However, strike wouldn't have moved me to the front. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, let's use strike, lunge, another strike. Got it. That's our first victory, and we gain ourselves an ink. A wonderful display. I knew you'd be the ones to help me get out of here. Be warned. Many of the creations of the book would be much stronger than what you've just seen. Before going further, you should gather your belongings. Perfect. By combining inks and skillful brushstrokes, you're able to paint the paths you need. I will show you. Use your ink here. It will be magnificent. So here is our ink down here. Throw the ink towards the treasures. You will see. So it reveals tiles, three in a straight line. I'll cast that up in this direction and then go to the very end and use a brush. Giving us the ability to access both of these with uh, minimal resources expended. So there is definitely a, a resource management element in trying to make sure that you have the ability to get as far and see as many important tiles as you possibly can with as few brushes and inks as you collect. The Sword of Destiny is a legendary, pick up here, a uh, legendary relic. If Shara is in front, she gains three power. And then down here, we have Fortifying Brew. If you end your turn with Sirocco leading, you gain two block. Heroes share a block total, to be clear. Now it is time to venture beyond the gate. Oh, hell, it does actually launch you from the tutorial immediately into your first run. The gate requires two souls to open. You cannot venture it alone. Passing through it will create a new story. You must fight your way back through. All right. Very pared back tutorial. I like it. Let's go through the gate. Hmm? <laughs> right. I like wielding a sword against the gate. Like, you know, if you don't open, I'm going to ineffectually swipe at you. To finish this story, you must defeat the creatures that have been painted to guard the portals leading to other worlds. One of these portals may just lead us out of here. I've been trapped here for some time, but lack the strength to push on. I will help guide you and provide you with supplies. Visit me and I will help as I can. You feel free to hang out over there. I'll take it from here, but do not worry. Vault of Wisdom, pay gold to draft a card or a normal battle up here. We can also see in the wider map... Actually, can I... Just going to find out exactly how I am going to be able to zoom the rest of the map. Can I look at the map larger? I want to be able to dislocate my control here. Huh. Maybe not at the moment. Oh, that was the space bars, which uh, <laughs> apparently is going to reveal the tiles directly below me. Okay. I'll start jumping over in this direction then. Maybe go up to get a initial card to start with. Natam is also a local retailer for all types of goods. Let's actually go check the storefront first, right? Get ourselves the most information before we commit to making a choice. Oh, okay. Keywords. Let's go. So here we can see uh, three different relics that we could buy. Uh, by the by, there are 80 relics with extraordinary effects. 30 special gems. As we can see, there are gems to modify cards down here. There are 30 special gems to upgrade your cards with and over 200 cards to customize through your playthroughs. So we have the relic Silent Shield at the end of your turn. If you have no block, gain eight block. Then Diamond Shield, start each battle with eight block. And then Gauntlet of Might, the equipped hero has plus one power. Power is increasing your attack damage. Warding Diamond, gain four block. We can see there are slots in these cards for the ability to socket a gem. 
These are the gems that you would socket, modifying the base card by the so, uh, the said effect. Gain four block. Um, gem of Endurance, gain seven, and then focused Prism, discard a card, and draw a card. In that order, importantly. As for the cards that we see, we see Mirror Image, which is an ally card. An ally remains on the battlefield once played, and it has uh, ally each time Shara deals damage. This deals the same amount of damage and then loses one spirit. Spirit, allies can have abilities that use spirit to determine their value. If an ally hits zero spirit, it is unsummoned. So oftentimes it is the amount of times they can do an effect or sometimes the amount of damage they do or sometimes the amount of block they provide to you, right? It is effectively a catch-all resource for allies to be using. There's Warcry. Both heroes gain two power until the end of your turn uh, at zero mana cost as well. We've got Battle Brother here. Ally aggressive with charge. So an aggressive and charge keyword. Aggressive deals damage equal to this ally's spirit to the front enemy unit at the end of your turn. So it is attacking for you, hence aggressive. Uh, and charge, it swaps this hero to the front. So it's not swapping the ally to the front. It is swapping the hero that casts it to the front. We'll see a lot about swapping because positional play is very, very important in this game. Uh, and it adds Shara's power to this ally spirit. Ooh, that's going to be particularly interesting if I can find more ways to give uh, more power to Shara. Maybe like double war cry before a battle brother or something like that. I don't know. Then we have Huddle. Gain seven block. If you control an ally, gain 11 block instead. Uh, the stand behind me, two mana costs, but it gains 16 block. And then big plans. Search your deck for a card that costs two or more and add it to your hand. Importantly, this does cost zero itself. Uh, I'm not going to pick up any of these just yet. I do like that I have that information, though, because it's already pushing me in the direction of trying to gain some more power, if possible. Uh, we can also see some information on the map here showing us things that are important in each of these available directions. If I go further over in this direction, I will be able to find the Ogre Belt. Whenever the equipped hero plays a card that costs two or more, gain four block. Sirocco has a lot of cards that cost two or more. None in their base deck. We can see the base deck that we have here with five cards from each character. They have none that are two costs in their base deck, but as you can see, or will continue to see over the course of the rest of this, uh, they have a lot of them. There is a theming that they have based around that. Um, I'll take a quick moment just to mention this system before I jump into a battle, immediately get back to the action. But as you increase the size of your deck, you unlock more things for not just your party, but for each of your two characters. These are perks, effectively. We'll see them as they start to unlock. I'm not going to super thin deck it in this first episode, at the absolute least. Let's go to the uh, Vault of Wisdom over here. Pay 25 gold to draft a card. Let's do it. Hmm. Hammer time. Spend all of your energy. Attack for 10 times the amount spent. What? Spend all of your energy and attack for 10 times the amount spent. But attack for what damage as you do that? Hmm. Oh, attack for... It's, it's not attacking 10 times per amount spent. It's attack for damage equal to... 10 times the amount you spend. Got it. Uh, there's Whirlwind here. Attack all enemies for 12. For each enemy hit, gain 3 block. As we can see, a 2 cost card for Soroka. Uh, and then Impact. Attack an enemy for 12 and adjacent enemies for 6. Um, I like dense damage, but I also do like AoE. Let's, let's take a Whirlwind, right? Open ourselves up to a little bit more opportunity to go for a more expensive card kind of situation. Let's go to the normal battle as well. Beautiful. Uh, so we can see the archer in the back of the line is intended to do 10. We can see the defender in the front line is intended to block. Hmm. <laughs> so if I throw out the whirlwind, I will be able to gain six block. And then I guess I can just throw a defend with Shara and take no damage this time. It's good to me. Ugh. 
that'll do for me. It's also worth noting, as Shara is in the front line, she has three power. So maybe that uh, ally could just be picked up right now. Maybe I don't even need to get that much more power to have it quote unquote online. Okay, so Lunge is currently attacking for 12 and then Strike is attacking for 10. I can murder the frontline target here, but the backline target is buffing. I also have the ability to murder the backline target by just going for the Lunge and then Strike and then Guarding. Swapping the order, getting Soroko in front. The guard itself is eight block. Soroko would be in front, so the fortifying blue, uh, brew rather, sorry, would give us two block as well. Um, hmm. I think I will murder you. Then guard to swap those positions. Nice. The downside here is now, if I want to take advantage of Shara, I'm going to have to get her back to the front line. Thankfully, her defense will get her back to the front line, and so will her charge. Um, although, it should work, right? Charge, and then whirlwind. Boom, got him. There's our victory. We get a pile of gold, as well as three precision inks, or is it a precision ink that reveals three? Oh, three precision inks. Reveal one space anywhere on the map. So if I click that, can can now I scroll? No! I hit space bar again! Why? <laughs> oh, I need to remember not to hit space bar. Okay, let's go get this Royal Link. You can also see there's a sky tower up in this direction. A sky tower will reveal many tiles around itself. A rune of sight will also reveal a random item on the map and all adjacent tiles. So let's go and pick this up first. Just get ourselves as much information as we possibly can get early on. Nice. There's also an elite up here, which will reward us with one brush. But I'm going to steer clear of that just for the moment. Don't necessarily think I am prepared. Ooh, another sky tower over here. Interesting. This is five tiles in a straight line. So one of the best ways that you can utilize the sky tower is by revealing very few tiles as you lead up to it. So what I can do here is use a royal ink up in this direction and then use a sky tower to reveal pretty much the maximum I could have revealed there with it. Get a huge amount of value out of it. We'll pick up gold, pick up gold. As you can see, the Fog of War is hiding also just good things to have around. A Radiant Heart over here consumes to heal both healers for 10 life. So the more of the map you can see, the more rewards you are going to be reaping. This is pretty good. If I use a brush here, I'll be able to go down to this normal battle, take the normal battle, and then get the Crumbling Blade until your deck is shuffled the first time, gain two power. Ooh, I put that on uh, I put that on Shara and then I go get that ally. I, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I like it and I love it and I want more of it. The first we are going to have to find our way through that normal battle. I do want to try and take both of these out before I take that rune of sight just in case it tries to reveal down here. I don't know mechanically whether or not it can, but uh, better safe than sorry in this instance. This one's simple. I'm just going to strike for maximum damage and then defend for maximum damage, despite the fact I am going to be taking two. I'm going to be blocking and buffing this turn. How dare you? Gee, Billy, how come your mom lets you get two effects out of a turn? And then you took too long. I'm afraid that now I will murder you for it. Ooh, three more precision inks. Love it. Get the crumbling blade. Pick this up and equip it on Shara. And now that I have that, I'm actually just immediately going to go over and get that ally. Let's do it. Hey, bud. I want the battle, brother. Get me. We'll leave the shop and keep on keeping on. Is this Ogre Belt super relevant? Whenever you equip to your replace a card, the cost you one more game for block. Yeah, kind of. Kind of, I guess. Let's get this Rune of Sight. A little bit more map information for me. Ooh. I can't just walk directly there, can I? 
Oh, yeah, no, I can walk straight through Nadim's tile. That means this Ogre Belt is a lot more gettable than I thought it was. Um, It'd be nice if I had the ability to just reveal these three with a single ink. Because this would be a great location to pop a, a brush after the fact. You know what? I'm going to go for another normal fight to get possibly another ink. Specifically, possibly an ink that just reaches three, because I think it'd be really good right now. Ooh, there's the battle brother. And then I can go for a defend and then guard, I think. Seems nice, eh? All right, battle brother. You're out on the board. You've got your nine damage that you are going to be doing each turn. Uh, I will... So because I want... Some castle. Cool. Uh, because I do want Sirocco to be in front at the very end, so that the Fortifying Brew is going to trigger, I cast Shara's Defend first there, because if I moved Sirocco to the front and then cast Shara's Defend, she would have moved back to the front. Also, we'll have a look at the Seed so here. They have Vines. At the end of their turn... This creature inflicts weak on the front hero. So yeah, I do also want Sirocco not to... Or rather, Sirocco to be in front because I don't want Shara weakened. Um, although it looks like I am going to probably weaken her this turn just for the amount of damage that I would achieve. Lunge. Strike. Strike. Mm, unfortunately, we've not only gotten a weak... Uh, weak being 33% less attack damage. We've also gotten a vulnerable, taking 50% more attack damage from enemies. Uh, can I end the fight, though? At the end of your turn. So aggressive units are going to attack before the enemy does. Which means strike, strike, strike. So we've got 6-6, six, 7-7. Six, seven, seven, so it's 26 total damage for us. We got it. Hey, Royal Link, five in a straight line. That's super useful. So honestly, if I can find a three, I'll want to use that instead. Because this is... This is common? Wow, I thought the common one was three. I shouldn't... I shouldn't be saying I thought the common one was three and then the rare one was five. Because what I'm referring to there is the balance of the game uh, back when I played it in the Wholesome vs. Demathon, which was a very, very long time ago now. Still this year, but I'm not holding the continued development of the game against itself. If anything, I'm doing the opposite. Stealth. Stealth enemies cannot be targeted if there are no revealed enemies. Sorry, if there are no more revealed enemies, stealth is removed. It's also not a single stack, so it's not just going to disappear at the end of the turn or anything like that. Uh, we got 15 incoming damage. I've only got one defensive card, so it's lunge, strike, and then guard after the fact. But I can actually kill this archer outright. I've just got enough power for it. Nice. Oh, you love to see it. Actually, as you're hovering over the stealth enemy here, you can actually see the kind of joints as well. Nice. Whirlwind? Whirlwind's pretty decent defense. So just whirlwind and normal defense seems nice. What I really want is another charge so Shara can get back to the front and then use Battle Brother. Although the deck did just shuffle. Hmm. Strike has been increased to cost. I imagine that was probably the effect of one of the enemies. Yeah, tripped. On the next turn, the first card drawn uh, costs one more. This is okay. I will still charge, cast the Battle Brother, and then defend solo. Strike for 10, another strike there, and then a defend. Beautiful, strike for 10, one more strike here, throw a defend. I could have thrown guard, it would have been more effective, but it's... It, it, it's not necessary effectiveness. 
The first card the hero plays costs one more. Okay, sorry. I thought it was drawn. Um... Fine. That'll do. We get some more precision ink as well as a pile of gold. This wasn't in back when I played in the Wholesome Verse Demathon. This is an excellent ink. There were so many times I was like, ah, oh, there's one tile I just need to discover. Just one tile game. Okay. Well, like, I could just use three of these. Yeah, I could just use three of these to try and make my way up. Three? Yeah, it'd be three in a brush to make my way up here. You know what? I'll do it. Let's get sick nasty with it. You go there. Oh, right. Okay, so it will allow me to use multiple of them with only one uh, click. Yeah, I could do that and then click over there as well. Cool. Did not need to make that as tedious as I was. Eh, didn't discover too much, but we do get to this Ogre Belt, which is going to be pretty good on Soroka. Uh, uh, uh. This is what I came here for. I'm going to change the balance here just a little bit so we can get more of those vocal lines. You know me, I love my voice acting. Let's go for a normal battle. That still needs to be down a little bit. All right. Well, Battle Brother makes a whole battle bunch of sense right now. To the front enemy at the end of your turn. So you're going to do nine. You're doing 14. I can actually kill this target. Although the backline targets are also buffing. Just quickly going to pop that one down a little bit as well. Uh, what? What? Oh, okay. Hang on. So the battle brother adds Shara's power to this allied spirit. Okay, okay, okay. So it's not on play. Add Shara's power to this allied spirit. And then it keeps that power. It is just using Shara's power as well. So she needs to maintain power for this to actually be very effective. That's unfortunate. That is not what I believe that to be, but it's okay. We'll just get you more power, I guess, Shara. Let's throw out a whirlwind here. Most effective card we possibly could have gotten. I'm, I'm thrilled to have had it. Uh, and you know what? Get Shara back to the front. 15 and then 4, 19 incoming damage, but then the Battle Brother is doing more damage again. Shara gets weakened. Hmm. He strikes to six apiece. That'll work. We go six there. This is going to do seven at the end of the turn. We go another six on that back line and then have a strike kill that. And then we just have one unit left out on the board. They have eight power though, so they are starting to get a little bit scary. That is to say, if many allies were still left on the board, right? And I was having to deal with them at this point. Obviously, individually, they are no longer really a concern. Let's give them a lunge. Ah! You had a shield. Dang. Double defend there. Shouldn't have started out with my biggest attack against that shield. Now we understand it slightly better. Beautiful. Uh, take another precision ink. So you don't get cards directly after battles, which makes me feel like I should be going to more of these vaults of wisdom. Because my deck is very base right now. Hmm. 
The equipped hero has plus one power. That seems really good. I think I'll save up for the Gauntlet of Might and then put that on Shara first. I've just got eight gold for leaving? Hmm? All right, we'll jump back around in this direction, go for the normal battle that's already open. Ah, why couldn't I get Whirlwind? Okay, so these are all Tiki. They have relatively similar stats across the board. And then at the very back, the Tiki Elite. At the end of the enemy turn, summon Tikis until there are four enemies in play. Reinforcements remaining three, so it can only do that three more times. Um, and then if there are no more revealed enemies, stealth is removed. Cool. Well, this is hilarious. A lunge actually just instantly kills one of these. Yeah. It's the sound death makes, apparently, in my mind. Uh, but if I do want to again, uh, defend against 15 damage, then it's defend guard. I have no need to take damage here. The frontline unit is summoned. Uh, this creature was summoned. Summons do not have to be defeated to end the battle, but will, uh, sorry, and do not give gold or life when killed. They cannot be targeted, but can they be attacked? Let's see. Yep. Yeah, they totally can. Get him. One of the big reasons I like having AoE cards early. They are just so much more efficient in a lot of these fights. One strike that gets a fun. kill. Explosive ink. It consumes a brush, but it reveals all spaces in a three-tile range around yourself rather than a two-tile range, um, such as a typical brush would. Hmm. Okay, so now I don't really have a direction to specifically work towards. Is there anything that is going to give me direction or a goal? Maybe like a piece of vision somewhere? Not really. All right. I'm going to just start moving up in the direction of this corner, I think. I want to make my brush as efficient as possible, so I'll use it here. Wow. That did not help us that much. Yikes, we are going to be leaving without having explored much of anything at all. This is largely due to the fact that I used two brushes, which was 40% of my supply of brushes uh, just here with a space button. So, oops, on my part for that one. Should I go draft new cards or get the power? Mm. All right. I'm going to come back down here. I will get the Gauntlet of Might. I'm going to put that on Shara. Leave the shop. I'm going to try and do this elite combat. It's going to give us a, a brush for having done. So thankfully, then I will be able to use the explosive ink. Okay. Our backline target here is the Queen's Assassin. This enemy intends to attack and use a major debuff. Major debuff. Oof. Major D. I don't want a major debuff against Shara, but. Is the major debuff going to remove her power? Because Whirlwind is already representing nine defense this turn. And if I did Whirlwind as well as Lunge, I can actually kill the Archer. That's so efficient of a turn, I have to. What's this major debuff, eh? Major debuff was a single stack of weak, a single stack of vulnerable, three stacks of bleed, take three damage at the start of each turn, which cannot be blocked. Uh, and, oh, no, that's just giving us uh, information about block as well. Uh, concussed, we discuss a, uh, sorry, discard a random card of this hero's at the start of the turn. 
destroy this at the end of the hero's turn. Okay, cool. Uh, and then trips, so they are going to be costing more to play anything as well. Uh, well, I'm going to have you do a defend and then swap Sirocco back out front as well in the turn. Even if I lunged here, it's not going to be particularly grand for us. Eh, I mean, it'll be fine. Lunch. Murder. And then God. That's just me and you, Queen's Assassin. You've got giant debuffs you can use? Yeah, so do I. Hmm. I should spread the damage, though, because this bleed is pretty rough. I don't want a second copy of that same bleed on the same target, you know. Uh, which means we're looking in the world of Whirlwind and Strike. Okay, 12 incoming damage represented. Um, cannot get the kill this turn, so we go for that. Guard defend. Swap our front line. And then ideally, we just draw two strikes this turn from Shara. And two. That's our elite battle down. I'll be taking this treasure. Thank you very much, Lee. Uh, at the start of each battle, inflict four bleed on all enemies. Oh, that's powerful. Uh, we get a brush, and we also get a stack of pages. Pages let you unlock perks between runs. Uh, so now I could try and go for the, the boss battle, but instead I'm going to try and use these resources to get a little bit more powerful elsewhere. Let's go for a Radiant Heart for a heal back up. Oh, you can collect these! Oh, I thought I was instantaneously going to be using them. Nice. So where is going to be the most effectual area to use this? It feels like I actually want to use the precision ink to get myself to an area and then pop it, right? Let's let's do something like that. So a three tile radius around this tile seems like it'd be pretty big. Hmm. Right? I like that. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, what a hard whiff right there. What tragedy. What absolute tragedy. Is there something right there? Because it would require, like, a lot of tiles to get around there. So maybe that's like a niche little thing being hidden. Nope. Nothing of the sort. Some gold, though. Ouch. Let's pump a Radiant Heart. Get some healing in here. Go to another Vault of Wisdom. I can go to two of them to draft cards. I should. I should, I feel. Ah. Goki. Activate. Use this ability once per turn. Allies lose a spirit when activated, unless they are unique. Interesting. Interesting. So I could play that and then instantly activate it in order to get two back? So if I have ways to cheat out big cards, that's particularly good, is, is what that's saying to me. Uh, we also have a bravery over here says ranged. Uh, it costs one less energy to play when played from the back. It blocks and at the start of your turn gain an energy and lose a stack of courage from bravery. It also does have two slots. Pretty neat. Um, do I want a second AoE card though? There's a lot. No, Doom Doomsight makes it less important for me to have a second AoE card. I'm going to take bravery here. Give a hero three power, dissolve. Ah, yeah, 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 
And we can see now that we have 14 cards, we have unlocked a talent tier. As you collect more cards, you unlock more talents. Each hero has a unique set of talents. You can only select one talent in each row. Collect more cards to unlock more rows. Uh, so we have Sneak Attack at the start of the turn. If Shara is behind, she gains two power until the end of the turn. Uh, Sirocco has one extra max life for each card in your deck, or together the shop charges 25% less gold. Um... I do like gaining power. Yeah, I like gaining power. We'll take Sneak Attack right there. And then, without any other ability to continue the exploration, think it is about time. All right? Nothing I left down there. No. Just a Vault of Wisdom that I cannot use. 25 gold to draft a card. Yeah, need two more. All right, boss battle. Let's do it. You are about to face this chapter's boss. It's very tough, so be sure to do everything you can beforehand. Are you ready? I might not be, but I did as much as I could, so... Take 4 damage at the start of the turn, can't be blocked. You're going to be using a buff this turn. This is the Cloaked Hunter, has 220 HP. I do want to get the Battle Brother out as quickly as possible here. I also do want to get that Courage. So let's do both. leaves me with more energy that I can use on the turns where the enemy is actually doing stuff, such as this. They're going for an 8x2. If I go Lunge, Guard, Whirlwind, that's a 8 plus 5. So I leave myself undefended for 3. Draw pile has another strike in it, as well as fire oil. I don't know if I need to be incredibly defensive more than I need to be fast. I will take the three damage here, I think. Let's use that first. Then guard. Maybe it was strike to No, no, that just forfeits five damage for no reason. I don't need to do that. How'd we end up full defending that? Guard is eight. Whirlwind was three more. Eleven. And then the auto block at the end. Oh, Ogre Belt. Of course. Ogre Belt. Can't believe I forgot you. All right. Definitely throw the fire oil on our back liner. Honestly, just to get the defense that it provides. Throw out a strike or two. Enemies attempting to buff again. I don't think I'm going to let them uh, live for too long. I have no plans to allow that. I'm also not going to move Shara to the front here, I don't think. Yeah, because she has bravery to move herself to the front next turn. Or rather, not to move... Well, it should move her to the front, right? Because it's a blocking card. Yeah. So it's attacks that say charge, or cards that say charge, rather, that will move you to the front. Uh, and in addition to that, cards that give you block. Oh, I see. The Cloaked Hunter is enraged when under half-life. Yeah, you, you, you look pretty enraged, to be frank with you. All right, Soroka, if you could just uh, tank 30 damage for me here. Oh. Enemies intended to use debuff. Hmm. Whirlwind double strike, I guess. That'll be good enough. Oh, that 
four poison, four bleed rather, is doing really well. Doesn't decrement over time. Ah, 46 incoming damage. That's, um... Hang on, let me check uh, in my... Yeah, yeah, that's approximately a lot. Thankfully, I have lethal. Strike. Strike. I'll move myself to the front, and the battle brother is going to move you to the grave. There's our victory. Hell yeah. Alright, let's take a pile of gold, a stack of pages, another brush. That's probably the thing I should take at the end, not having any hover effect there. Uh, a vial of rejuvenation, which will fully heal both heroes and clear all wounds. Ah, uh, that one is instantaneously used. That's our full heal between floors. Then we have another relic offering. Uh, we have Magda's Rose, epic. At the start of each battle, add a random card of the equipped hero to hand. It costs zero this battle. I could give that to Soroko, and then Soroko will often gain some extra energy. That'd be nice. Because it'd be a, a, a costly card a lot of the time. There's also the Stone of Yalmir. All the equipped hero's cards gain retain, keeping the hand at the end of the turn, and then the Urn of Gabriel. At the start of each battle, earn two, sorry, earn two, rather, gain two energy. Hmm. I'm kind of interested in this Urn of Gabriel. Big reason for that being that if I can get Sirocco's card Fire Oil in the opening hand, it has two different slots for gems to go in there. If I can modify it such that it stays in our opening hand, and maybe can be cast multiple times with uh, with multiple different investments of energy. That might be one of the best ways to gain extra power on Shara. What Shara really needs is multi strikes. I'm gonna take the Urn of Gabriel, and then we have a choice. I think here, yes, between a Blood Crystal, deal half damage, and then inflict bleed equal to the damage dealt. Uh, or we can go Lacerate, attack for 3, attack for bleed, bleed. We also charge, attack the leading enemy for 13. And a Fire Breath here, attack all enemies for 15. I'm going to take the Blood Crystal. Keep full control. We'll just continue. And we are now lost in the Over Sky. Chapter 2. Hello, Nottam. Ooh. Interesting. We've got a walk right here, but we've got high five. High five is a combo card. If the last card played this turn belonged to the other hero, then it costs one less. So it can be free and then just give you an energy next turn. Hmm. But when it's free, you know, it's also still costing you the card in hand. Harrier. An aggressive ally and their attacks inflict bleed. I do like the idea of ki uh, kind of constantly trying to stack bleed further and further and further. Give the fight some inevitability. There's a gem of growth here. Give the socketed ally one spirit. Eh. Eh. I want an uncommon kind of situation to, to put into the allies instead. Attacks on this card pierce for half damage to the next enemy. And then when this card blocks, deal twice as much damage to the front enemy instead. Mm. Interesting. Going back to the cards that we can purchase, we have a balloon fish here, an ally that activates to swap and draw a card. So that is swap the position of the two heroes on the board. Then there's an exotic pet, a unique ally. Whenever the front hero plays a card, deal four damage to a random enemy. Hmm. Four damage to a random enemy? It's pretty low. And then there's Burst Powder over here. Choose an enemy for the rest of the turn. All damage dealt to this enemy also damages adjacent enemies. Uh, then finally up here, in terms of new relics, we have the Branch of Tarum. At the start of battle, shuffle three Gaia's Grace into your deck. And then the Gaia's Grace card, unfortunately, is being covered by the 
tooltip there. Uh, it says something, and then it says gain five block, draw a card. Dissolve. So I imagine that disappears from the deck at that point. If the equipped hero has played no cards this turn, draw three additional cards next turn. Three additional cards is huge. Oof. Hello, we'll, we'll, we'll probably see you again in the near future, friend, but for the moment, let's head up here. Start making our way over to that Sky Tower to give us more direction, or... This discovers a lot of tiles right here. This one up here discovers a battle at the absolute least. And it gets us closer to discovering another battle. Sure, I'll do this. The Triton Tide Lord. Uh, they have Fairy Protection. They cannot lose more than one life at a time. They have four bleed and uh, 20 damage. Yeah. So it's 12 instances of damage we need to deal here. There's Fire Oil, just because we have the extra block that we get from it. Drop two defense in here, and then drop just a strike. Attack and block this turn. Cool. Uh, I guess I still do need to consistently defend. God, I want some multi strikes in this deck. Just some source of them, please. Battle Brother for some passive damage. You guard to move forward. Whirlwind to get some block. As much as you can even gain. Uh, definitely can't do six instances of damage here, so we are looking to defend again. Let's go. Bravery. Strike and then a reorganization with the defend. Full defense there. And this turn we ought to collect our kill. Nice. Did cost us some HP there, but we've got a royal ink. It's going to be incredibly useful for getting us to a sky tower. In fact, it may already get us to the sky tower over in this direction. And indeed it does if I shoot up there. Uh, sure. Wastes one tile of discovery, but it's very efficient for everything else. Excuse me? Excuse me, bud? What did you just do? Fugoro the Thief has stolen one of my treasures. You took the crumbling... You are... I am coming to get that back. You are not going to enjoy the experience of me coming to collect that. Let's be very clear on that front. Fugora the Thief has my treasure. It's down in this area. Let's actually also take a quick look. Steam Engine. The first time you discard a card each turn, draw a card. Interesting. I don't really do discard tech right now, but maybe I find another important discard card. And then there's the Yak Hide up here. Each turn, gain three block. That's also pretty good. Just seeing the relics that we already have four marked on the map. So if I did a tile here and then another tile here, I, it, it would take three of my brushes to actually go discover Fagoro the Thief at the moment. So that's just extremely inefficient. Definitely going to need something else to really convince us to do that. Perfect, thank you. Actually getting something contiguous with our current discovered map so I can go get a pile of gold. Bigger pile of gold is like 45, nice. Um, if I take on this normal battle, I can then go discover that rune of sight as well. Like it, probably will do. Uh, but that discovered tile is three away up there as well. So if I did a torch here, I'm only discovering three new tiles, that brush rather. But if I do it over here, I'm seeing more. I can get myself up to this normal battle. And then if I have three tiles of discovery, I can get to the yak hides. That's, that's good. 
That's quite close. Hmm. Gem Shell Tortoise. Uh, they have 20 hide. The first time they take damage each turn, they gain 20 block back. And then there's two yaks behind it, uh, which each have not that much damage. Hmm. Does the bleed at the start of each turn? Okay, okay, okay. That's actually really good. Because that means what I can do here is fire oil. Strike, you're going to die before you do anything. Obviously, you've died before you do anything. Attack there. Ow. Fortunately, you have weakened our most powerful character. Ooh. I actually really don't want them to be in the front line right now either. That is a total of seven block. This is also seven block though. This is seven block with 12 damage. Seven block with 12 damage better. Yep, Shara's not doing particularly good as a result of that one, unfortunately. The defend and the guard could have helped us out a little bit, but hey, oh, that's how it goes. I feel like this one's probably just battle brother, rotate, rotate. Let the battle brother be the instance of damage that triggers that each turn. Actually, you only get 20 from the hide, right? It's going to instantaneously kill you. Doubling ink reveals three spaces in opposite directions. These are wild to try and actually get good value out of. You can get ridiculous value out of them, to be clear. Uh... But you want to be real picky with it. Thank you also for revealing tiles contiguous to my line. Is there any way that I can use this such that I can easily trigger that tower over there? No, not easily. I'd need a precision tile. Potion, rather. Ink, rather, rather. God, I do really want my relic back as well. Just can't run out of these resources too early. That's what happened last floor. Uh, it's also worth noting, you can see we don't have the Radiant Hearts we had last floor. Use it or lose it. Hmm. Up there's just the elite battle as well. <laughs> okay. I think we'll use this for the Yak Hide. Ooh. Encounter a story from the world of Faria, a narrative over here. A strange creature catches your eye as it runs through the woods. You follow it until it stops at a pool perfectly of perfectly still water and submerges itself without a ripple. You look into the water to see two shimmering reflections of the beast just under the surface. Follow the phantasm to copy a card in the deck. Battle Brother is not unique. Let's do it. You look deep into your own reflection, and then submerge yourself. You wake up sometime later with dreamlike memories of a strange and wondrous place. Hmm. I've got to play both of those in this fight. I just gotta. There's no sequencing considerations here. There's nothing that changes. I just have to play Battle Brother and then defend, defend, strike, strike. Um, cautious. When this unit takes damage, lose three power this turn. Oh, perfect. That's exactly what I needed to hear. All right, we're taking uh, Nekamata's each. Down. 
No damage beat. So Whirlwind will decrease your damage by a decent amount. Battle Brother, so this is going to defend. For yeah, this will be enough. Right? Because then the poison or poison bleed. Uh, every DOT to me is poison. This is just red poison that seeps out of your body. Uh, the enemy intent here is going to be decreased by the bleed occurring at the start of the turn as well. Let's get another Battle Brother out. Okay, so what that has done is just straight up doubled the effect of the Battle Brother that I have on board, and that's exactly what I was hoping for. Mm -hmm. 13. Well, actually, that unit was going to die to its bleed, but then the Battle Brother was going to attack before the bleed. So actually, it was going to die to the Battle Brother and it was going to waste damage as a result of that. Um... Do I get more by defending or attacking here? This gives a seven block. If I attack you two times, I get effectively six. So the difference is only one plus the, the courage, I guess. But this way, I'm actually dealing 22 damage, which is also pretty good, so... Right, I'll go with that. You'll take four, and you'll take... Lethal. Ah! Precision Inc., it's nice to see you. Unfortunately, I feel like I have already committed to where I am going to be placing the doubling ink. I'm just using it for three up in this. Is three up in that direction? Better than the I think it is, right? Because this doesn't even discover anything new with the doubling ink. But it does get us to more battles, and those battles can give us inks, which I could use in the other direction more easily. Okay, fine. Let's use this right there. All right, Skytel. Another stack of pages. I have now five pages for unlocking those perks between runs. Two normal battles I can go to, and... You know what I do have right now is a wealth of gold. Three Gaia's Grace into the deck. There's also Haria there. Hmm. Starting each battle with eight block makes some things a lot easier, like paying the Battle Brothers out earlier and stuff like that. I don't know. I, I still want to hold on to my money there. I feel like I'm hoarding all these resources. Like, even the Blood Crystal I haven't even sent out. That should, that should go on something, but it feels like I need more cards. You know what? It feels like I need more cards. Let's go to a Vault of Wisdom. Uh, impacts. Attack an enemy for 12 and adjacent enemies for 6. There's another copy of Bravery right there. Then Mountain Fist. Gain 8 block. Then attack the leading enemy for damage equal to your block. Hmm. I want the one with two sockets here, just straight up. Seems good, man. Yeah. I think I do. Hmm. Don't think I need any of these, though. Because that should trigger the Ogre Belt and do 12 damage after the fact, right? Assuming I haven't played any other block cards first, which I may well have done. Let's go to another Vault of Wisdom, I think. High five. Duel. Attack the leading enemy for 12. Oh, Shadow Strike. Attack for six. It's a zero cost. It discards a card, which is going to draw another card after I get that steam engine up there. Shadow Strike is exactly what we're looking for. It's got two sockets in it. Oh. Oh, that'll extend us. That'll be beautiful. All right, let's go. 
try and find an ink that'll make it a lot easier to move in those directions. Yakapults. Elite War Yaks. At the end of each turn, give all Yaks 8 block and 2 power. Yakapult is a Yak. Got it. Uh, you also... Ah, right. That is the Elite War Yaks that I was just looking at. You intend to attack and summon more enemies. Yikes. Unfortunately, we know that Whirlwind is now going to be in a discard pile, which is going to... It's a kind of moment for us. Big hours. Thankfully, that defense is enough that I can leave Shara in front. Hmm. As it turns out, maybe I did not want to leave Shara in front. It's what, Mountain Fist, then Bravery? Is that really what I'm going to do here? You're also intending to buff this turn. You don't need to die right now. Oh, I need the Battle Brothers out as soon as possible, though. Ah, interesting. Okay, so the je uh, sorry, the Relic did not resolve mid-cast there. Uh, and result in 12 damage being passed forward instead of only passed forward the 8. And let's go bravery. Get some extra energy for the next turn. Because we've got Battle Brothers that we have to play here now. Mm -hmm. Hello, Battling Brothers. Oh. Oh, dear. Defend six. Oh, dear. I may be dead. Yep. I have left myself woefully undefended and did not heal up Shara. The reason I didn't use my, my health outside of this is because I was looking to get more value on Sirocco by having them take two more damage before, uh, before I used it to heal, but mm -mm. that's not how we just did that. Uh, what's the best that I can do? Like, I could... The most damage I can remove from the enemy board would be... 17? No. Yes? Yeah, it would. I can kill both the frontliners. No problem. But then I immediately die to the Yarkable. Down. Down. And then we see what that does. Ooh, get faked out. We have wounds. Cannot be played. Characters dying adds wounds to your deck. You need both of your characters to die before you are actually going to be dead. Uh, sing this song five more times to revive your dead hero. Shara's revive song. Shara's revive song. Punch. Punch. God. It may not end up being uh, having juked you out if it turns out that we end up dying anyway. So I should try my absolute darndest to not to do that. One more revive song. Welcome back. So if I lunge there and then defend and then you defend, we can swap those back. We can kill the frontline target with the Battle Brother. Thank you we have this Battle Brother. Only providing the extra hit we need every single turn, but unfortunately, the Yakapult is just getting stronger. Yes. 
discard a wound, knowing it's not really worth anything for us. Um, and then a mountain fist, just for the defense. Like, I can strike the back line. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter. Because they had armor. Or block, rather. Can't even access the backliner because the strikes just not enough. Oh, we really got rumbled when they took our club, eh? Guess I'm gonna start indiscriminately targeting his backliner, trying to kill them before they kill us. Let's go. Bravery. Throw a mountain fist out. Didn't do it that turn. Can I do it this turn? Yep. Well, wind. Shadow strike. We now have our kill. Oh, we're a lot worse for wear for it, but we do have a Royal Link. Royal Links are quite good. Y'all, just take the 10 life. I don't need to keep uh, hold of that one that badly. Okay. Royal ink up here. And then a tile revelation. Get a stack of pages for even more perks. And we can collect the steam engine. Ooh, that's not even hero specific either. Perfect. Um. What I really want to do now is is get down to this pipe, though. One, two, discover. Yeah, I still can't do it in, effect uh, in an effective way. I can use a precision to get to this battle. What I'm going to need is is definitely just more potions, so... Let's go to a normal battle here. More inks, rather, sir. Berserk. Each time the heroes play a card, this gains one power this turn. Why? Um, it's fine. Please bravery, battle brother, and then a mountain fist to move you to the front. There's a little damage possible there. We've also got the battle brother doing decent stuff, I guess. And I'll defend, and then battle brother just to get to the front. I'll even use a lunge here, because Oh, but you're doing a three times multi-attack here, which is going to be pretty harsh. Oh. That causes me three more damage on Soroko by doing that attack. Yeah. I feel like I have made some fundamental mistakes on the first floor that I am still paying for. Well, this is the turn we go all out. That'll draw us a card as well. Yes, I feel like I made some fundamental mistakes much, much earlier, and I am now paying for them. I didn't include much in the way of defense. I was attempting to try and defend myself, honestly, mostly with just Soroko's uh, relics here. Didn't buy any uh, gems to try and modify the same thing, unfortunately. is defense. God is defense. Oh. Taking a bunch of damage. Isn't good though. Uh, we should be able to bravery our way to the front line. Shadow strike here. And then a strike strike. One down. And one down counts for a lot when it's the only enemy on the board. Hey, another royal link. Love to see it. Hmm. Actually, Desperately love to see it. That Royal Link is going to be a constituent ingredient in getting down to this uh, Fungora the Thief. Radiant Heart, thank you so much. Uh, immediately popping that. 
No qualms. I want to stand here and pop a... I really want to use a brush down. I don't want to use a brush in this corner. I'm just going to use a precision ink right there. All right, for Goro. <laughs> I was just uh, holding on to this for you. <laughs> here you go. The stranger disappears. It seems he's left something behind. We get the crumbling blade. Uh, that will go back on you. And we also get the farrier flute. Energy is stored between turns. Ooh. Okay, that's really good because we get an energy on the first, uh, two extra energy rather on the first turn that we don't necessarily always want to utilize or always have the ability to utilize effectively. Okay, defend, defend, strike, strike. Uh, like we are gonna battle brother. We are gonna. What are you all doing? Um, each time the heroes play a card, take four damage, and then this backline says. Any unblocked damage is dealt to both hero, uh, both heroes, both heroes. <laughs> heroes means us. Uh oh. That's ten damage to both of us. Yeah. I feel like this is where we um. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Become deceased. Shadow strike here. Drop a Sirocco strike because that's the worst. Yeah. Uh, gosh. Sirocco in front with 18, and then the 5 by 2 happens. Sirocco's going to have 1 HP left at the end of this turn. Yeah. Oh, no. No, they will have 3. Thankfully. Okay, I can bravery my way to the front line, and then... And then die. Or at least lose Sirocco. Yeah. No, wait, this one's only got the area of effect this turn. Okay, so... That means that playing... Mountain Fist first would have been helpful. But playing it second will just put you back in the line of danger. And we already have wounds in the deck. The deck is only going to become more and more encumbered. Oh yeah, that actually will kill us. Seven pages! And also the characters are taking experience in leveling up here. That jumps us back to the main screen where we will take a second just to go to the compendium. These are embellishments to your story in the rogue book. You can use pages you've found so far to add permanent upgrades to your heroes. You collect more pages by exploring the rogue book. You can earn more pages by defeating the rogue book and playing at higher difficulties. You may only inscribe embellishments between runs. The first embellishment is Farrier Wells. Farrier Wells will now appear on the world map. They allow you to increase your energy per turn. Uh, over here, we've got additional talent trees. An additional talent tier, rather. Uh, place an extra visible treasure in each chapter. Hides an alchemist in each chapter. Alchemists can transform one of your cards into a powerful new card. You can discover volatile gems, which can be used in battle. Reveal the final boss each time you enter the rogue book, so you know who you're going to be fighting at the very end. As you can see, it has very much got more of a rogue light kind of progression system here, such that we will be able to enhance each of our following uh, journeys through. Hide an additional heart in each chapter. That additional heart, I think, might have been the thing that I was thinking of, of you encounter it and then just immediately heal. Um, Let's take the first rank of Farrier Wells. The next rank would give us additional Farrier Wells on the world map. Allows you to increase your energy per turn. Uh, I imagine this one's only going to cost us one, five, one, one. Uh, this one's five over here as well. 
So what I'm going to try and do is just get a breadth of these. I'll take an extra treasure. I'll take an alchemist, definitely. Um, uh, this extra healing does seem like it actually might be five. Unfortunately, it is uh, rendering over the side of the screen there. Um, reveal the final each time I go into the rogue book. Definitely going to want some of that. We can see none of the rest of these are purchasable, and I could sit here for 20 minutes theorizing and reading out each of the following ones, but I think it's probably going to be a little bit more intriguing should I reveal them at the time that we have the ability to pick them up before the moment. My name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Rogue Book. I am infinitely glad to have been sponsored for this game because it's a game that I was, don't tell the sponsor, already going to play of my own accord. You can see the link at the very top of the description down below to pre-order the game for yourself on Steam. Again, the game will be available on PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch at launch on June the 24th of this year. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we will see you next time.